Hi everyone, this is lecture 22 and sex chromosomes the material here is found in chapter 12. Up until this point the last week we've talked about mitosis, meiosis, uh, we've talked about chromosomes and how they divide during those two, two phases, but we've talked about the chromosomes as uh, autosomes. Autosomes are the non-sex chromosomes. Sex chromosomes present a special case because in some uh, members of the of species, they are not the same. They are not homologous. So there are special considerations that have to be made and lead to differences in how traits are inherited. So a few questions to begin. Number one, in humans, females are the what sex? Number two, the X and Y chromosomes are not homologous and yet they still pair in meiosis. How is that possible? And number three, in humans, X inactivation occurs. Okay, this picture here is a karyotype showing the collection of chromosomes in humans from the longest chromosome 1 to the shortest chromosome 22. These are all autosomes, the non-sex chromosomes. Each pair is homologous. They have the same sets of genes, though different alleles. One of them comes from the mom, and one of them comes from the dad. However, the 23rd pair is the sex chromosome, in this case X and Y, from a male. They are not homologous. You can see they totally look, they totally look different. They, are, they do not have the same collection of genes. Uh, they are not going to be... Um, and in males, there's an X and a Y, but in females, of course, there's two X's. And, of course, that, that, those are homologous pairs. So the Y chromosome in males in in mammals is the chromosome that makes males. So how does that work? In placental and this of course changes the different species. Every species is different. In placental mammals, the gene on the Y chromosome determines the sex, and that gene is called SRY. SRY is a gene that produces a transcription factor product not unlike PDX1, and it turns on other genes that lead to the development of male features, for example, the testes. Without that SRY gene, the developing embryo will become female. That gene was discovered by looking at XX males and XY females. These are males who are genetically female, and they're females who are genetically male. What happened was a chromosome translocation, where a piece of the X chromosome containing the SRY gene was translocated onto the X chromosome, such that the SRY gene is actually found on these chromosomes, so it's a mutation. That single SRY gene was enough to allow the development of male features. In a similar fashion, in XY females, a portion of the Y chromosome is deleted. The part that's deleted is the part that has the SRY gene. Without the SRY gene, the Y chromosome is not sufficient to generate male features. Sort of the final proof was that you can, the scientists created transgenic mice, that means mice that are that have a, a different collection of genes or a, a different gene than they normally would. They created female mice that had the SRY gene added they developed as males. So the SRY gene is very important for male development. This is a picture of the Y chromosome, the schematic of the Y chromosome. Notice first of all that it has several defined regions which are color coded in this picture. On the ends of the chromosome is a so-called PAR domain. The PAR domain, as you can see here, is called pseudo-autosomal region. These regions have some sim sequence similarity to the X chromosome. It has enough sequence similarity that it can pair up in meiosis, so that when meiosis occurs and the chromosomes segregate, the X and the Y chromosomes will split evenly. The second region, this dark blue region, is the region that contains the SRY gene. Notice it's at the tip of the Y chromosome. If this tip of the Y chromosome mutates and breaks off, 
it can be added to the X chromosome, and that's how you generate those XY or XX males. The next portion is this light blue. That's simply euchromatin, and down here in the in the long arm is euchromatin. The euchromatic regions of the Y chromosome contain about 75 genes. It's a very small number for a chromosome. Compare that number to the number of genes on the X chromosome, upwards of 1,400 genes. The Y chromosome is kind of a run. Sorry, guys. This gray area here is the heterochromatin region. And this entire region, shown bracketed, is called the male-specific region of the Y. Notice that it excludes the pseudo-autosomal regions, which are more similar to the X chromosome. So in, in humans and other placental mammals, you probably are familiar with the sex determination system, the XXXY. XX female, XY male. Because the XX females are, um, have a homologous set of sex chromosomes, we call these homogametic. XY are non-homologous, we call males heterogametic. Again, mammals, but also some insects and some plants. Sex determination is definitely not, has evolved several times throughout um, evolution. And it's clearly not the only way that sex determination has evolved. The XXXO system is shown here. Females are XX, but males are a single X. The O in this XO system represents a lack of a chromosome. It's simply the uh, lack of, an, of a Y is enough to cause male features to develop. This mode is found in some insects, for example, grasshoppers, where it was found first also nematodes, and uh, some other organisms as well. And lastly, there is a so-called ZZ and ZW mode of sex determination. Kind of odd sounding, but it's really just a variation of what we mammals have. Just flipped around. For example, females are the heterogametic sex, X and Y. And males are the homogametic sex, XX. Some insects, for example, butterflies where it was discovered first, most birds, some fish, reptiles, and amphibians. It goes by the name of ZZZW to distinguish it from the XXXY system. They just pick the next letters in the alphabet. Okay, there is a potential problem when females have two X chromosomes and males only have one X. If you remember back to our discussion of mutations, for example, cystic fibrosis, and you only inherit one good copy, well, that's okay, you can function, function normally. But that's not always the case. Sometimes when you inherit one good copy and have one bad copy, that causes problems. So if you have an entire chromosome where females have this entire X chromosome and males only have one X, that could cause serious problems developmentally and functionally. Females have the potential to produce twice as much of each gene, which we call an X-linked gene, as males. That's going to lead to very dramatic changes in development and throughout growth and development. So how do we compensate in mammals? One thing that was noticed when you look at cells, this is a staining for the nucleus, that human female cells have a stained region of the nucleus that shows up as this little circular structure here pointed out by this red arrow. This structure is never found in male cells. Back in the 50s and 60s people were able to see this and uh, one scientist, his last name was Barr, uh, discovered this and became known as a Barr body. Females have this Barr body, but males don't. It stains with DNA dyes, so we know it's DNA. But it's very, very condensed, very heterochromatized. Other scientists led, uh, developed an idea that was became known as the Lyon hypothesis. Mary Lyon was one of the scientists that came up with this idea. And that is simply that one of the X chromosomes in females becomes inactivated. And, and then we know now it's become uh, um, heterochrom heterochromatin. This is the way it works. In early human development, 20 cell human female embryo, basically the 12th day of development, uh, the X chromosomes will inactivate one of them. By inactivation we mean it becomes silenced. The entire X chromosome is condensed into heterochromatin 
and is inaccessible to transcription to and to um, gene expression. These chromosomes are shown here either green or yellow. X is representing the X chromosome with a subscript M for maternal and P for paternal. So either the maternal is kept active or the paternal, but not both. This inactivation is random. It occurs, again, about the 12th day of development. And it's, there's a cellular memory. So whichever chromosome becomes inactivated, let's say it's the yellow one here, it continues to stay inactivated through subsequent cell divisions and into the adult human. What this means is that females are mosaics in the sense that some of your cells will express the maternal copy, the green copy, and some of your cells will express the yellow copy, the paternal copy. These condensed chromosomes are the bar bodies that we saw in the previous slide. This mechanism is called dosage compensation. What it allows us to do is have the two sexes, male and female, that each express one X chromosome's worth of genes. And again, this happens about the 12th day of development in humans. All right, actually one last thing. You can see this uh, mosaicism here in a, cat, in a tortoise shell cat. Again, this is an, a random inactivation. This is, a, this is a, a gene that makes fur color. And it's a, there's two versions of this, two alleles. One's an orange allele, one's a black allele. And one of these in a heterozygous cat will be inactivated, but inactivated randomly so that you either have the orange allele expressed or the black allele expressed, shown here with this cat. And it's random, so that every tortoise, this is a tortoise shell cat, every tortoise shell cat will have a different pattern. And of course tortoise shell cats are females only. Alright, so that is all for today. I will see you in class. Okay.